I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Coming up now to our tang. Since we have our tang bolt here, we can do a little bit of our cleanup work to bring this stock down to uh, our tang. You see a lot of these kits where people don't address the wood on top here. I understand that there are concerns about durability here uh, by removing some wood, but really, if you wanna elevate your kit, I don't personally think that it affects the strength of it at all from these kind of kits that I've been shooting. Um, you really wanna bring the height of your wood down here around your tang to match your tang and it really helps these look a little bit nicer. To illustrate that a little bit, I'm just gonna mark here with our pencil that area of wood that I'm talking about. And again, to each their own on this stuff, I'm not a professional. I'm just telling you how I do it here. Um, so if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You know, there's nothing against that. But I think if you're looking and you've spent the money on a kit and you want it to last for a long time, you know, it's not an inexpensive thing. Do a little bit extra work. It's going to make it nicer and it's going to make you enjoy it, I think, a little bit longer. Just because of the kind of culture that we're living in today. A lot of times people finish one of these kits and they... They don't feel very good about it, you know? They hope that it could look a little bit nicer. So that's why I bring that up, just as means and as a simple way for us to clean up how your kit looks from the factory. And I'm even coming in right up to the side of that tank. Just like that. Just like that. I want to be intersecting with that tang. I don't want to be getting up onto the barrel and messing that up, but that's what I want to be doing. And see, that just takes a minute. Just real short. But it brings all that down onto a similar level. And just gives you a nice look. Come in with a fine flat here. Refine some of those ridges from your course. Get right up in there around your tang. Come back into your wrist a little bit. And feel across that with your hand a little bit. You know, see where you're at, see what, where you have more wood. Don't file the, <laughs> the notch or the catch out of your bolt like I did previously, <laughs> but still work up and, and get to that area there. Right now I got a bit of a flat right there. A little bit of a ridge right there I don't like. There we go. In total, looking at the camera right now, less than five minutes there. Gets that area kind of cleaned up and looking a little bit nicer for you. Now you're ready to go. I'm going to come back in here on our mortise. I'm just going to clean up these mortises so that they match a little bit in length. Using my safe sided file here. Admittedly, it's a little fine for this as far as texture goes, but I can work 
that point of that mortise back without worrying about damaging anything. And again, this is something you don't necessarily have to do. I just noticed while I was working on it that these were a little more off than I'd like them to be. And with that modified a little bit, just come in here and clean up the wrist. I'm using a pretty fine half round there. And then up here, I've got a little bit of a ridge I don't like. Okay. Feel better about that. The front mortise is a little long too, so maybe we take a look at that and pull it back a little bit just to make it match a little nicer. I'm not gonna, I'm not matching the sweep here. Um, just the the way this wood is, I'm not going to go that far, but uh, we do have something that we can go on at least to give us an idea. Bring that mortise in, just a hair. Really, this <clears throat> isn't something you need to do. It feels a little silly after all the work we put in to those, you know, I wasn't paying enough attention, but I would be happier knowing that it's a little bit closer. Come in with that safe side. Just breaking down that top curve where we filed there. Probably do that a little better with this half round even. I don't want to make a bunch of lines in that. Still a little bit extra in there. Before I go any further here, I'm going to notch this tang bolt a little deeper. That's something I think, <laughs> and maybe it's just me because I'm terrible with bolts and things, but uh, in comparison to some of the kits that are made today, it feels like these bolts are very shallow. So this file is a triangular file set up to deepen these notches in a bolt head or a screw head. This is going to help me get more of a purchase with my screwdriver and it's going to help us clean up the head without totally ruining the bolt. Just in those few strokes doubled the depth of that notch, which is kind of surprising. But that's gonna give me a lot more to work with, and that's something that we need. So, 
for where we're at now, we're really ready to come in and start polishing our hardware, being the brass primarily, as well as things like our, our trigger guard and our barrel and getting that ready for finish so we can head the stock towards finish and we can get this puppy wrapped up. When talking about the metal finish and, and getting things towards a polish, my Phillips driver here. I like to try to do, and, and based on what I've read and talk to other contemporary builders on, or, or really quality builders out there, they like to do as much finish as they can with the hardware in the stock. Because then you get a nice finish, a, 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 you know, a nice grit polish, however you want to look at that, whatever word you want to use, you get a nice uniform connection between your wood and your metal. And when you get that nice uniform connection between your wood and your metal, it just makes your life easier. It makes everything look nicer. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to do kind of a rough assembly of this piece. We're going to get everything tightened up and we're going to come in with sandpaper and a really fine file and we're going to clean up all of this stuff. I'm going to remove the nipple here because it kind of gets in the way. And when you do this, this dry assembly is important because you want everything to be in the stock, everything set up the way it is going to be when it's done. And that's how you're gonna get a nice even finish across all of your parts. So with that, I've bolted and screwed my trigger plate in. You can see here on the other side, that's why I was doing that when I was yakking. We have our tang bolt through the front of our trigger plate and we have a placeholder screw here at the back of our trigger plate, holding it in just like it will be when it's done. Then up here at the top, I've put in my barrel wedge, my barrel key, however you want to call it, and I've tightened my tang down. So this is like this is done, like it's finished and it's ready to go. And functionally, we could take this out and use it right now if we wanted to. I want to try to finish and polish as much of the hardware while it's on the stock as I can. So starting with our tang here, because we haven't worked it as much as the other areas of the piece, this is going to allow me to get a nice union between the stock and our tang. And at this point, I've kind of done rough filing here that you've seen, really is the point where I like to jump into some sandpaper. And like the other vi build videos that we've done, I start with 80 grit, I go up to 120 grit or 180 grit really. And then I jump up to 240 grit and that's about it. That's about as far as I take things. There are times where I'll come in with a, a scotch bright and kind of smooth out or matte that 240 grit. But for me, that 240 grit works and that's what I like to use. And then with whatever grit sandpaper that you want to start with, uh, really, from here on out, we want to use a file back sandpaper technique. And this file back sandpaper is really just putting our sandpaper between the file and what we're working on. And coming in here and, and scraping and, and sanding wood and metal all in one go. The file backing is important because we have a nice rigid spine to our sandpaper. And that keeps us from distorting the shape of anything too much. If you come in here, especially at this step and at this stage of your build, and you come in here with sandpaper without the file, so you're just coming in here with your thumb like this, you're not applying even pressure across that work area with your sandpaper. So you're gonna have thumb-shaped and, and thumb direction-shaped ridges and bumps in the stock that we've cleaned and refined here as much as we have. So by backing it with that sandpaper, we can come in here and we can retain a lot of that shape and really clean up a lot of this, the, uh, the profile really that we want. We can make it look nice and good while taking it still back and sanding it the way we want to to prepare it for finish. So I just check that here and there with my fingers. I want to be careful with the barrel in here with our tang. We're going to come in and 
draw file that barrel some just to get it cleaned up and ready to go. But really, that's all you need right there. So I'll come back in here into our wrist and I'll do the same thing. And this is where you can really start thinking about how you want it finished. If you want more of a carded finish, which is kind of what I like, you're not going to take it up to 6, 8, 1200 grit on your sandpaper. You're going to leave it you know, where you're comfortable leaving it there to have kind of that rougher, coarser finish. It gives you a little bit more grip on things if that's what you're going for. And really on those more organic areas like our wrist, it works well to come in with a half round so you can ride those curves a little bit. And just like with our rough shaping and things, I'm going to come through and do all of this with a single grit before I go back in and, and change grits. So I'm going to go over the whole stock and all the hardware mounted with this 80 grit. And then I'll come back through and jump up a level. And then come back into that patch box and kind of our butt plate. I like to switch over to a, a larger file here. And while it's not, uh, you know, perfectly uniform, you start to see things really unify here at this step. You start to see those curves get knocked down and, and just get cleaned up, especially back here on this butt plate. And it moves pretty quick. Once you get to this step, I mean, you're just filing and sanding to your preference. And, uh, and you really start to see the home stretch, which is always nice. So you can see there a little bit of that difference between where we've, where we've sanded and where we haven't. Just come up here across the top press of that butt plate. Just bring that all into unison. And you're at 80 grit. Like that. Nobody, I don't think, really likes to do the rear of the butt plate because it's such a large area that you need to work. Um, but it's important and it's, it's good that we do work it. So I'm switching over here to a half round file with our 80 grit and I'm just going to work kind of in this direction. You can see a little bit up in here that we have some nicks and dings um, just from my sloppy file work. We want to take those out a little bit and bring this to the same level of, of finish that we see on the rest of the stuff that we've taken to 80 grit. And really for something like this butt plate, it doesn't need filing, I don't think, at the rear. 
really what we want to do here is match it and finish so that everything looks uniform. Right now, if we took some brass black to the butt plate or however we want to finish it, the rear face not being sanded to match would look a little bit different and probably look a little bit darker. This wouldn't look as nice. We want it to look nice. I'm just using strips of 80 grit here. Um, I think I've joked about it in the past, but just buying big surplus discs really of these sandpaper strips has really done well for us in the shop. You eventually rub the grit off, um, but really you just kind of toss it and grab another strip and go from there. It's gonna be the same thing if you're using sheet sandpaper that you've purchased like from the hardware store and like a variety pack even. It's gonna be the same thing. Over on this side, it's got a little bit of a deformity there. Here you can see how that sandpaper is wearing. And as I'm kind of conscious of that, I can adjust where my file sits. And we can come in here and wear off more of the grit there. Really what I'm going for on this butt plate is you can see there are some lateral lines in this casting here. Um, it's probably just in how it was cleaned up before it got sent out. But I usually take these in a vertical direction when it comes to cleaning up the butt plate. Now sometimes when you're doing these, as we've talked about in the past, you'll run into casting forms or just kind of lines in the casting itself from the manufacturing process. You don't really worry too much about those. Like right now I've got one kind of right there you can see. But as long as I kind of keep after it, and get that cleaned up. And as always, it's about the finish that you want. So we've got some of those dings up in here. I don't mind some of that. Depending on the finish. But I want to bring them down a little bit. And you can get the same thing and work them from a different direction here by coming up to the top of that, that butt plate. There we go. So that was just about five minutes to get that going. I could take it farther if I wanted to, but um, for what we're working with here, I feel good about where that's at. I want to hit this patch box just a little bit more. You can see we have a couple lines in here. And then the way that lid interacts gives us a little bit of trouble here on the back half.
But by popping it up there, they can work that back end. Like that. And that should clean up nice as we keep going. Really, we don't need the barrel in anymore. So we'll go ahead and pop it out. Well, we still need it in, but I guess for our 80 grit pass here, we don't need it in. Once you get to this level, it becomes a lot of whatever kit you're working on, really whatever muzzle loader you're working on, even if you're building from a blank, becomes a lot of putting it together, taking it apart, and repeating. Then much like the butt plate, we'll come up here to our nose cap and do the exact same thing. You want to be careful as you're sanding too. Sometimes your sandpaper will get built up and you'll start running tracks. You'll start seeing grooves instead of even sanding in your in your stock. You don't want that. I'm just tightening that screw a little bit more. This nose cap needs a little bit of attention, polish wise. So switched over again to the half round. So I can get around the surfaces some. Now I jump up to a strip of 120 grit sandpaper. It looks just like this. And I go through and do the same thing over again. Um, this is kind of slow and a little laborious, but we want to go through and make sure we get nice, even coverage across the kit, across all of the parts here, and uh, just keep working our way forward. As I go up in grit, I tend to notice that the paper wears out faster. So that's something to keep in mind 
oops, as you're working on things. That if it feels like you're going through your paper a little faster, you probably are. And that's nothing to be concerned about, I don't think. Traditionally, when we're thinking about the metal finish and your parts finish, it's been explained to me that you want, you don't want to remove the idea that this was made by human hand when you're going through and finishing this stuff. But there's a degree and a level of polish that has been aimed for and, and strive for kind of as a standard and, and really you want to how I was taught was remove a lot of the and try to remove all of the tool marks really especially like from your metal you don't want to see line let me get my pencil here make more sense you don't want to see even file lines here in your finished product because it looks intentional having having even spaced out file lines on something just looks like you weren't paying attention um, and going through and removing those it's fine to go back in and age stuff but for this level of finish before we think about aging you want to go through and remove that stuff because that is kind of the standard for several hundred years here is going through and removing tool marks like those file marks. Now, if you want to go back in and add age, you want to do it in a natural manner, just as if it was added naturally over time. When doing that, it's important to think about some of the things that happen to a rifle in its life, <laughs> you know, as you as it's being carried here and there. Most of the time, the wear and tear that we put on things as we use them, even today, isn't even and isn't standardized like that of a tool. Like a file. A file is very rigid, very standard. So when you're thinking about aging and thinking about, oh, well, you know, maybe I can cut some corners by leaving some file marks, leaving things a little bit rough during the build process, consider finishing it out to a high polish or a high degree, like we see historically, and then aging it from there. It's gonna look a little bit more natural, I think. And you're gonna get a different look than you otherwise would. And there are blog articles and magazine articles and other videos out there about aging something purposefully, if that's what you're going for. I know it's an argument back and forth. Like I remember being told about when the, when the first Herschel House gun showed up at some of the shows, some of the matches and things, it was kind of a big deal because why would somebody build a new gun and then make it look old and nasty. <laughs> and, you know, whether you like it or not, it's something that prevails to this day in muzzleloading. But I think if that's what you're going for, and that's what you want, just like you, a stock and a muzzleloader would age naturally, you have to do things randomly. You have to do them naturally. Um, using natural materials, like rocks, like mud, like dirt, you're gonna get a lot farther a lot quicker than if you try to do it with tools and things. Because tools leave marks. And no matter how 
<laughs> how much you try, it's hard to make that tool leave a natural mark. And I think that's obviously part of the skill in the purposeful aging that we see in muzzle loaders today. But like everything else, it's something that you kind of learn over time and get better at and, and learn about. And that's really where taking some classes from these folks can help you figure out some of those things if that's what you're interested in. There's several classes across the country where you can learn from folks and they might not tell you everything that they know and how to do it, but they're gonna tell you quite a bit and they're gonna lead you in the right direction. Make sure that you're going down the right path and at least set you up to, to learn how to do it yourself. Sometimes it's not about the, um, it's not about telling you just straight out how something is done, I think. I think sometimes there's kind of a level before that where a teacher or an educator in some capacity gives you the tools to get where you want to go. Um, but it's, it's not a, oh yeah, this is how I age things perfectly or this is how I do this or that. They kind of give you the fundamentals. Kind of going back to art school a little bit. For you to go out and, and put together your, on your own. Now, this trigger guard we already kind of set up in the stock. I'm going to polish out the bows of this separately out of the stock. But as I'm up here into the 120 grit or 180 grit sandpaper, I want to make sure that I'm getting these tails and connection points right so that they match with the stock. Not that it wasn't real before, obviously, but once you get to the hardware cleanup like this, so much of uh, everything starts to really come together. And I, I guess that's what I mean by it starts to feel real. And once you get all the brass matching in color and texture, it doesn't often come from a factory that way. Once you get to that point, it's like, oh man, this is real. This is gonna be done someday. After you've been working on something for months, <laughs> stopping in between work and other things, that feeling feels pretty good. Now we'll jump up to our 240 and blow right through this. <laughs> 